straight to quarters. Now, no, the gun. Stand by this tablet battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's Indomitable Man of the Sea, Horatio Hornblower. received a letter from my dear wife, Barbara. She was well, she said, and missed me. And my small son, Richard, was also well. Somehow I find it difficult to keep my mind on the pressing problems that faced us there at Riga. Captain Bush, my senior officer, paced up and down my cabin aboard the Nonsuch, and his face set in anxiety. He was talking, fifty to a fathom, yet my thoughts were, were still in England. It was not his words, it was that confounded pacing of his that finally brought me back to our immediate concerns. Well, sir, it's this plague of ice, I'm afraid of. If we're not careful, we'll be frozen in for the winter. Oh, confound it, Bush. Can't you keep still, man? Uh. <coughs> oh, sorry, Bush. <coughs> to tell you the truth, old friend, I, I was thinking of home. Who was I, Horatio? Mm. We could drop anchor in Sheerness and... That's but 30 miles from Smallbridge. Barbara would be there waiting, and my little boy, Richard. Uh, uh, or it might be even better to appear suddenly and, and surprise him. Huh? <laughs> uh, <coughs> Bush, those are dreams, dreams, dreams. Uh, our duty remains here. That's not so, Horatio. You, you've paid no heed at all to what I've been saying. Yeah? Why, uh, there's ice in the harbor. Thus far, it's thin, only a scum, and mainly at the shoreline. But each day, it creeps further out. I know, I know. We'll soon be icebound, frozen in. My first duty is to my squadron. Locked in, we're at the mercy of the enemy. Marshal Maidon may bring his foot soldiers across the ice and capture every one of us. I know, I know, I know. It was done 20 years ago at Amsterdam. History has a way of repeating itself, Horatio. It's dangerous to risk freezing in. Extremely dangerous. Yes, that's true enough. And yet the Admiralty has ordered us to stay. But think how the news would spread through all Europe. Bonaparte's second army captures a British squadron. Mm. The Admiralty would have my head then, wouldn't I? Disgrace, dismissal. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I say up anchor and get out before it's too late. Well, General Esnoff and his Russians would call us cowards, Bush. Horatio, the Russians are done for. There's no fight left to them. Well, they still hold here at Riga. And if they do, what of it? What of Bonaparte himself? His army has already taken Moscow. Aye, but there's some question that he can remain there. The Russians burned the city before he took it. What of that? He's there and he's victorious. Well, from all the reports General Esnoff receives, Tsar Alexander... <coughs> the Tsar hasn't <coughs> yet lost heart and... The Russians are still fighting, Bush. Reports more like rumors than facts. Horatio, you've done all that could be done and more. Without you, Marshal Maidon would have reduced Riga and 
marched on to St. Petersburg long before this. Well, we've helped holding them back, I'm glad to say. Besides, uh, there's uh, something else. Hmm? You're not well, Horatio. Oh, nonsense. You're not. You've lost weight. You've had a cough for weeks. My advice is take the squadron out as well, soon as... Well, your advice. We have to stay where we are until we have orders to move. I don't see that. I saw no ice. We'll follow orders. to find me a horse. And as I joined General Eshoff and Colonel von Klausowitz near the Russians' defense works, it was all I could do to keep the beast in hand. The opera one made him rear and snort, and, and the saddle heaved harder under me than any ship's deck in a hurricane. I strove to keep my voice calm and unruffled. Well, it, it, it appears you, you may be right, uh, General Eshoff. The, the enemy is massing troops in, the, in their front line. Yes, I can see Many troops, Commodore. Mm. The French have brought up reinforcements. To judge from their colors, I think they have been joined by some Spanish and Portuguese battalions. Is that not a company of Bavarians, too, now? It is. Your eyes are sharp, von Clausewitz. And look beyond, if you will forgive me. A regiment of your own countrymen, the Prussian standard. I see that. Yes. A shame that Prussians must fight for Bonaparte. They have been forced to fight for him. They are not willing, allies. Oh, big pardon, sir. The bombardment seems to have stopped. Yes. So I noticed, Brown. The general assault. It is the assault. The enemy is advancing all along the line. Come, Estoff. There's no time to be lost. We must rally the troops before it is too late. Uh... Nothing but open country. Well, exactly. And it should not be open. It's the enemy's flag. It leaves them exposed to a sudden attack on that foot. It might, sir, yes. But uh, who's going to lead such an attack? <laughs> sir, look there. The Russians are starting to break. They're being forced back. They're retreating. At any moment, the retreat might become a rout. Close by me, near the ruins of what had once been a village church, stood a motley collection of Russian troops not yet engaged in the battle. They were all sorts, artillerymen, supply troops, and a few foot soldiers, all bewildered and leaderless. I found myself beside them, shouting at them, gesticulating to, to make them understand. I pointed towards the flank of the attack, and, and they came after me. We fell upon the enemy there and took them completely by surprise. Sir. Sir Rachel, are you all right, sir? Here, here, let me help you. I'll confront the brown. Of course I'm all right. <coughs> Simply because I have had a horse shot on the rear. Uh, no reason to... Uh, Are you certain you're all right, sir? Yes, I'm quite... Quite, <coughs> quite thank you. Well, uh, it's all over, eh? They're beaten off. Hi, sir. Going back to their own lines with their toes between their legs. It was that flank attack that did it, sir. And by the time I'd set myself to rights, General Esnoff had galloped up with Colonel von Kuzmitz. Ah, uh, uh, here we are. Uh. Uh, do you see them, Commodore? Are those troops? Prisoners? <laughs> Look again, sir. Oh, well, of course, if they were prisoners, they'd be under guard, and they're not. It's a whole regiment of them, and, and beside it, another. And their uniforms, ragged and dirty. Wait, those, those standards they carry, can they be? <laughs> exactly. Those are Spanish troops, and, and, and Portuguese. But, but before the battle, they were with Marshal Medon's army. They, Oh, General, do you, do you mean to say they've come over to our side? Exactly. <laughs> they deserted en masse. Oh. I would be much obliged if you would question their commanding officer on my behalf. Oh. 
We are much obliged to you, Conde de las Altas. What you tell us about Bonaparte's main army is of great interest. Hunger and disease, eh? Even so, Senor Colo. It has also been reported that nearly all his horses have died off. And what of Marshal Maidon? If, if, if Bonaparte falls back, will Maidon also have to order a retreat? This too, I cannot say. Well, you've been part of his army. Does he, does he lack food, there, supplies? There is no shortage yet. Mm. His troops are cold and there is some disease, but... Uh, I see. In the lap of the gods, eh? Uh, Commodore Hornblower, may I speak of another matter? Mm? I have a favor to ask for my troops, sir. Uh, would it be possible to return us to our own countries? Back to the peninsula? We will fight against the tyrant, uh. but we can fight better on our own soil. I have not seen my native Spain for four long years. If we could, could go by sea, if you could provide shipping for us. Yes, it will be arranged. It, 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 it might have a, a great moral effect on, on other allies of the tyrant. Gracias. Gracias, Commodore. You will not regret this. However, I, I ask one favor in return. Any favor that is within my power, name it. Your signature to a proclamation, that's all. We shall endeavor to circulate among Bonaparte's other satellites the news of your joining the Allied cause. Your signature will attest to its truth. I will sign gladly. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, Conde, <coughs> I must return to my ship. The news just came. He's running as hard as he can for Smolensk and Warsaw. He may never get there. No, oh, they're dying by thousands every night. Nothing to eat. Winter. Bony feet. That means we can get out of this bay before the ice by heaven. Not yet, Captain Bush. Uh, why not? What about the enemy here? Marshal Maidon is still standing firm. He'll have to retreat. Well, there can be no sign of it. Otherwise, General Lesnoff would have mentioned it. I would most certainly have mentioned it. Uh, still, it is possible. Uh, Commodore, I am arranging to send out a sally, uh, a, a small attack to test the enemy lines at dusk. Mm. Will you join us? Oh, most certainly. Say you can't. You're, you're worn oh, out. Nonsense, Bush. I'm as fit as a fiddle. Oh, well, if you say so. Uh, uh, you'll wear warm clothes, won't you? Uh, and take Brown along. Oh, anything to keep you happy. You're like a hen with one chick, Bush. sign of any retreat there. Hey, General Listop. No, from Blazowitz. And here come their cannon. They seem to have plenty of ammunition to waste. It grew darker and snow began to fall. The campfires of the enemy glowed as yellow as before and the flashes of their cannon remained regular as clockwork. I stood Watching, listening. Then, after a bit, I began to doubt my vision. At first, I thought that curious lightheadedness was overcoming me again, making my eyes deceive me. But in a moment, I... They're destroying their guns, firing some shots at us while at each salvo they fire against the front ends of one of their own cannon. Eh? Do you see that first battery? Only one gun that time. By the great Nipa, you are correct, Commodore. Disabling the guns, letting their campfires die. Edon has given up. His army is in retreat. That must be it. Well, close of it, we must follow up at once. Order the foot soldiers to prepare to advance. I want the cavalry paraded two hours before dawn. Now, if all goes well, we should come within sight of their rear guard by daylight. Can you provide me with a horse, General Lesnoff? I want to go with you. <laughs> Like a dream, only clearer somehow. We trotted up the road, Brown five paces behind us. No shots were fired at us. Cossack patrols and the enemy, too, stared at us unbelievingly. Then suddenly, we were in among the Prussians. I asked 
be escorted to the general. His name was York. What is this? Von Kalsevich? Traitor? If I may, General York, let us put aside personalities. What are but... you doing in my ranks? You realize I shall make you prisoners? As you and all of Prussia have been prisoners of Napoleon Bonaparte? No. General, I represent the King of England. General von Kalsevich represents the Emperor of Russia. We are fighting to free Europe from Bonaparte. Are you fighting to maintain him as a tyrant? Such a question cannot be answered. It is impolite. Bonaparte is beaten. He's retreating from Moscow. Not 10,000 of his army will reach France. He has other armies. The Spaniards have deserted him, as you know. So have the Portuguese. All Europe is turning from him, knowing that they're, they've been betrayed. I am a soldier. If you fight for him, you may keep him on his tottering throne a, a few weeks longer. Look, you're, you are a German. Your duty is to your enslaved country, to, to your king, who is Bonaparte's prisoner. I am a soldier, I tell you. You can free your country. You can free your king. Now, at this moment, you, you can end the useless pouring out of the blood of your own men. What do you suggest? An armistice, General York. Immediate cessation of hostilities. To put down our arms? To stop fighting? Fighting for Bonaparte, yes. Well, General... I agree. Good. Brown caught me as I slumped forward from the saddle, and that scene of snow and desolation faded. I seemed to drift for hours, for days. I was in a bed. There were, there were lemons around me, nothing but lemons. Again, a bed. Soft bed, soft. Church bells. Well, Pardon you, sir. And I also, Horatio. Thank him. Church bells, boys. We're ashore then, huh? Yes, Horatio. Well, those, those bells must mean peace. They don't ring that much in water, do they? It's peace. Oh. I've, I've been ill, haven't I? You have. With the plague for a month. Huh? Unconscious most of the time. A month? Impossible. I never thought you'd pull through, sir. You were that fever stricken. Well, where's the squadron, Captain Bush? I've gone back to England, all except for none such. Ah. I put Duncan in command. Yes. We've been ordered to stand by here until you're ready for the trip. The doctor says you should be up and about in another three weeks. The wind was fair. We cleared the Baltic and soon bore down the wintry North Sea. We raised land, the grey sands and green hills of England. We dropped anchor at Sheerness, where I was welcomed by the Vice Admiral. But I was impatient. And the next morning, just 30 miles to Smallbridge, 30 miles, and the church bells ringing and Brown pounding upon my own door, and Williams, the butler, opening the door. Oh. Oh. Comfort and joy? By heavens, Brown, it's, it's Christmas! Oh, my, my darling. Uh, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm back. Hmm? Uh, uh, how is young Richard? Oh, he's wonderful, Horatio. Good. Oh, my dear. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.